following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Got the big Republican thing tomorrow night. I'm gearing up for that. Just want to see what kind of fiasco it turns into with the, the town crier there at the head, the lead. It's going to be interesting. I want to see what the, uh, the 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 people who are doing the interviewing on the debate situation are going to say. This is this is uh, spotlights on them. This is going to be really really interesting. It's going to make the d Democratic one probably just pale in comparison on the fireworks scene. I don't even know if the Democrats will have one. Anyway, let's take a look today at what's been happening overnight. Some of the comments has come out about uh, possibility of not raising rates, things like that. And what we want to do is first get into the Treasury situation because this is the one that was more than likely immediately affected. But, you know, it's not in a huge way affected, in my opinion. Here's here's the situation we talked about. Some of these targets up top, 127.11, we kind of got a close above there. We were rattling around. I actually took a shot on this, uh, trying to buy support at 127.11. And I know this thing's kind of gone up a long ways in a short amount of time. And what we want to do here, I've actually got a new build of the scanner. I'm getting ready to show you guys in a little bit. But what we want to do here is just kind of look at you know, the major inflection point in the weekly, 127.11, and we want to reference the other ones up here, too, the daily situation, 127.04. Um, I'm still not convinced that this thing's not going to go higher. Uh, right now, I'm personally taking a break from it because we've just kind of gotten back below that. On the pullback, we've kind of gotten below support a little bit more than I wanted to see. I know some of you guys out there are ready to short treasuries, but it just seems like well, it doesn't seem like it. It's, you know, they haven't raised rates. There's been all the reasons in the world to raise rates. And even, and in the situation of not raising rates, the economy is still kind of slogging along as far as they're concerned. And, uh, you know, the economy could turn bad and these bonds and notes could explode higher. Um, in addition to the stock market coming off, that would also be some, you know, I don't have to tell you guys this, you've been doing this long enough. That's going to be somewhat of a, of a possible move up situation in the uh, the treasuries and the bonds anyway. So throwing my two cents in on the fundamental relative relationships, uh, the technicals really 127.04, 127.11. If we can get back above that area, I'm going to be a purchaser of 10 year treasury notes again. And that's the way I'm looking at the notes. Now, obviously, the market likes lower rates. They like the rhetoric of the tempering of of possible raising rates so the s and is obviously um you know i was we got a close below 2085.50 that was just super cool the day before um and what we're looking at now 2097 or excuse me yesterday we had the close below 2097 is where we're at pre-market right now you know where do we go from here i'm still a fan of looking at and i'm going to load up my newest scanner here so we can get some small changes Let's see here let me make sure I got this right sorry guys here we go all right, we're in business in about two seconds here. Let me pull this up. This is a kind of a demo 
build here I'm looking at, but let me go, go in our indices. Let me pull up our S&P. So this was as of the close yesterday. And again, we've talked about not getting too zealous overnight in trades. And this is another good reason we're gapping up 15 points. If you guys don't mind, you know, the volatility of overnight gaps right now, which seem to be relatively large all the time, then by all means keep trading overnight but right now it just seems that it, it's not a bad idea to just kind of sit on the sidelines and wait and see what happens when we wake up now what, what's happening now is you know the internals are not open we're going to see these things flip flop around it's very non-directional right now even if they do flip back positive negative we've got some stocks that are open here um i'm gonna pull this over to the side here but the breath situation it's positive, but you know, is it positive on all time frames, and is it positive in a in a long term sense? Not really. So we're still, you know, stepping back and looking at it. We just got back in the balanced area. This is kind of a knee jerk reaction, I think, in my opinion. I don't know if we're going to have any legs with this. Here's the weekly. We're coming. We're going to have to come back up into that as we've already done this week up into one twenty one oh two twenty one oh four. So you know, what do you do with this now? Let's go back into the 240s. These are all predicated in the scanner. These levels we've gotten above 2093.50. So right now, if you're if you're considering shorting, um, you got to just sit tight and at least wait for this to get back down below 2093.50 or rally back up into this 2102, 2104 area, which is going to be a a very big number from a resistance standpoint so that's the deal on the s p's let's move right into a couple other things that might be affected and guess what gold is seemingly not affected <laughs> so again this to me is is waiting to do another flush down below 1080 that's the way i'm looking at gold i'm not looking at it any other way obviously the u.s dollar is We'll do. We'll look at natural gas in just a second. The U.S. dollar. We met those targets up top, the intermediate targets, and we came off of this 98.310. That was something we were talking about the past couple of days. That would be kind of the first target-rich environment, and that's been met. It's actually coming off kind of nicely, which lent, leads me to believe that unless we consolidate around that area, we might just take a rest for a little bit. But here's the weekly. The upper number is 99.51. That's still. The situation on the dollar it, it's kind of amazing that you know the dollar actually is not coming off more um, with that fed information uh which is bullish in my opinion you've got a profile that's appeared below in the 240s that's bullish as you know so the dollar may take a little bit of a break here i'm not a big fan of shorting the dollar so i'm just kind of waiting to see what can happen as far as a new breakout above 98.31 or coming back down into some support around short-term support 97.72 okay here's the situation on the shanghai i just want to reference this this is something that seems like it's spinning down here consolidating compressing here's the daily remember these profiles appearing above that price action very very bearish here's the situation on the weekly not what really wanting to get away from this general area uh, i would be a better that this thing's going to do a flush and then 3554 is going to be that resistance level as it migrates down on the shanghai so keep your eye on that the u.s market's not going to like that nor is any any other market out there u.s dollars coming off a little bit more so we've gotten into short-term resist support at 97.72 already on the dollar Okay, Euro, let's cover the usual suspects here, and then we'll get into some stock plays like Disney and a couple other things that have earnings. Let me get our charts right here. All right, so the Euro, we've kind of broken down. This is the situation on the daily. We talked about some targets down below 108.49.50. We finally got back down below that 109.50 area, which I talked about pretty often, which was the big number. Why is that the big number? Let me see what's going on with our charts here. I'll tell you what, we're going to... There we go. Uh, all right, we're going to do a quick reboot. 
from eSignal. This is running off a server here right at right after right at the first break. But that big number on the euro 10950 is that weekly unfair low. And we talked about initial targets for intermediate traders at 10850 that's been met today to the tick almost 10848. That number is 10849.50. So we hit it bounced up so now we're looking really hard at the 10950 area as resistance that trade below close below and then go back and retest here's why this is our weekly again there's that 10950 general neighborhood 10948.49 um, that's where I'm placing stops above I think this is a nice little piece of action that's going on right now if it doesn't work out we get stopped out we try it again man this is Ooh, ouchie. This is uh, this Canadian dollar. If you guys are looking at this and following it, just an amazing move up here. Um, talked about, you know, trying to find support areas on this. We hit the bottom of the box there again. We broke out again. This thing is not too high. It's nothing to short. Stay away from it on the short side until we have some new profiles attempting to appear on the weekly or daily and the scanner will let you know that. So as we go into the Forex situation here, there's the, where are we at? Why can I not find this? There we are. Green across the board, no new profiles attempting to, to appear on the Canadian dollar. So that's obviously all systems go still north on this. Some green shoots or red shoots, if you will, that are starting to appear on the 60, but I'm going to call that noise. The long-term trend is still in force on that particular currency. Let's hit crude oil, and we're going to kind of be into all stocks a little bit later. Little, you know, a little bit of a kind of a dead cap bounce down here. Um, Again, the big number right now, 47.17. You hope that we kind of get back up into that area. We had some, you know, magenta bars appear down here. Those were can be taken to some degrees as as profit targets. But again, I'm a big fan of just letting this thing stop me out. I've still got long term stops above 47.17. All right, let me hit natural gas really quick. Uh, I'm trying to wait. For, I'm I'm going to do uh, a reboot on my charting on the break here and then we're going to hit natural gas but i'll just I, I can't get my weeklies up right now so in about uh five minutes we're going to pull up all our charts on natural gas on september we're going to take a look at it and see what's going on here we'll be right back after the first break guys is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz Proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Here we go. Let's get into natural gas really quick. This is September contract. Weekly, you know, again, nothing to glean off of there. <sighs> 2.824, again, um, long-term trend is is down. Uh, I'm not looking at this as an area to buy breakouts, actually, on natural gas. I think we just reached some targets on a dead cap bounce from this 2704 area. If you see, we kind of went down there and got away from it really quick. <laughs> this is a relatively thin, balanced area, and I'm just... I think, I think the risk is still to just get long natural gas. I think you wait till we get below 2.824, just continue trading it the same way from the from the short side. Don't see a lot of change in this. That's my take on it. We also have, uh, you know, a situation where let me just pull up our weekly here. We also we also have a situation where natural gas is obviously made some lower lows when Navigator was kind of making some higher lows. But again, I don't like the way this is kind of consolidating down here on the long term in near these general areas. And uh, I just would watch out trying to pick a bottom on this thing right now. Would, would, would much rather wait for some better technical confirmations that the trend is changing. All right, let's take a look at Apple. All right, uh, no mystery here. It's all over the news. Let's just kind of figure out how, what we're going to do with this. Uh, here we go. Once, so, again, we talked about this yesterday, that these breakdown areas on the weekly, they're pretty apparent. And if you look back at Apple just going back in time, this is, this is a pretty serious situation relative to Apple in a you know, pre-split 
or post split type manner from 55. The move up from 55, we on this is our weekly. We haven't really had any technical damage. We had a little bit of a breakdown here for a smidge around 75, but that was only for less than a week. Um, and then we were kind of back in the show here. But so 55 into 130, 135. This is a what's called technical damage. The last time this happened, even for less than a week, was January 2014. So this is a big deal, obviously. That's going to be the long-term resistance area, 124.70. But, you know, here's the intermediate situation on Apple. And there's no new profiles appearing down here. I mean, has it gone down quite a bit here lately in the last couple of days? Yes. Does that mean it has to continue to go down? No. But remember, we have no signs on this. I'm going to pull up our scanner really quick. Go into our uh, S&P situation. Here's Apple. We're sitting at the bottom on a 240 and a 60, but remember, there's no really new green shoots happening here on Apple yet. And we haven't had our latest profile output on our chart, so that's why the 240s are showing bottom. Actually, the scanner's ahead of this, so it's actually nice on that manner. But uh, again, you know, we, we need a new green. We need at least a yellow peelback happening on Apple here, and uh, we don't have that yet. Okay, we're going to take a look at Disney really quick. Not good. So what do you do with it now? Here's the weekly. Obviously, again, this is a, a really good example, again, of why not to trade things before earnings. 121.69 closed yesterday. And what's happening now? We're trading 113. So it took about a... 6% haircut, 6.5% haircut overnight. If you're okay with stuff like that, by all means, keep trading things before earnings announcements. But here's the situation on Disney. And right now, we're below the unfair highs on our daily at 119.15. And the weekly, if we're trading 113.22 right now, 111.46 is that long-term support. And then you've got 105.02. So what does that mean? That means if you're trading this on an ultra long-term basis, you've got some support at 111.46. If we break there, we're more than likely going to try to race for 105.02. If you want to handle those types of pullbacks, being a long-term investor, again, by all means, that's up to you. But any technical damage, any trading below 105.02, I think you just need to be out of the stock, period. Short-term guys, again, I think you uh, need to wait for some new information on our 240s and we'll talk about that when we get back Tom O'Brien has just announced a live online workshop taking place Wednesday, August 12th, Six Trades for September. This special event will be open to all subscribers to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. Tom will walk you through six trade setups in the market he's identified setting up for September. Two long positions, two short positions, and two option trades. New subscribers will also receive a free copy of his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. But we're not done yet we're also including a tiger's den membership as part of all market insights subscriptions at no cost as well you get tom o'brien's best-selling book the art of timing the trade your ultimate trading mastery system 30 days of his newsletter market insights access to his live online workshop six trades for september and access to the tiger's den this offer is only valid for two weeks so don't miss out sign up for your 30-day free trial to market insights at the front page of tfnn.com today if you're looking for a great opportunity to diversify your financial portfolio, consider the Principal Protected Market Safe CD from Everbank. They've just released the second running of their five year Market Safe Power Metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. You get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. 
And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your deposited principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on the CD. Intrigued yet? The August 17th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you you and your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for coming back and joining us. Here we go. S&Ps. Uh, we're going to look at the s and Okay. Okay, hold on. Okay, let's talk to my tech guys here about something. We're going to take a look at the S&Ps. We're going to take a look at some of the ETFs here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the XLE one more time. Considering there's no green shoots on crude oil whatsoever, in my opinion, right now, um, we looked at this yesterday. I just want you guys to look at and see how ugly this situation is. We've got some things happening on the 60 in our scanner and the XLE stocks. HP couple little things going on here some of the brighter red daily that means we're coming back into the profiles here and what we're doing with the rest of them is there's we're going to take a look at uh let's see we're going to take a look at exxon mobile really quick I get a lot of emails about this stock, and here's our weekly situation. This is kind of one where, you know, it really wasn't cooperating before with the XLE at all and showed its hand. That's what we look at when it comes to relative strength trading. We want to pay attention to things like that. We reached a target up top, and actually we're looking at this as a weak stock in a sector that was actually rising. I don't know if you remember when crude oil went up to 60-something what was it? I can't remember the high price there, but ExxonMobil topped out just at the top of the balance area on a long term without even showing any breakout signs. And that to me was just a telltale sign, but you know, has stayed relatively weak the whole way down um, as crudels continue to get hammered here. 8376 crossed that border, and uh, now what do you do with it? So here's the 
here's the daily. There's no green shoots down here for this stock. It's, in my opinion, not the time to start looking at it to accumulate. Here's the 240s. So, again, I get a lot of emails about this. Is it time to buy this thing because it's a gargantuan market capitalization situation? The thing can go lower. This thing could be in the 60s, guys. So, you know, again, until we start seeing some new information here on, on uh, ExxonMobil, it's, it's something not to play with. Let's get back in the scanner for a second. Healthcare, again, you know, this has been one that's just weathered the storm so good. We're going to take a look at a couple of things in here. Let's take a look at Johnson & Johnson. This is one that really has been, to some degree, a laggard, but we're going to take a look at it to see what's going on, going on with Johnson & Johnson, if I can type correctly today. All right, so here we go here. Um, 97.76, obviously, support last week, but you know, do you step in and buy this thing in a large way? No, I think you've got better opportunities. I mean, this, even on a daily not to mention the weekly, we've just stayed in a balanced area and there's been no breakouts really on that long-term trend. And to me, this thing has a chance to really come off if the market comes off in general. This will be one that, you know, if we start crossing that 97.76 border, and the reason I mention this, I get some emails about this one too. When we cross the 97.76 border, it's going to be time to get back in the water big time on the short side. We've got 100 as a barrier recently that it couldn't get through. Uh, again, you've got way better longs out here than uh, Johnson & Johnson. We're going to take a look at Merck also, MRK. This is uh, some earnings a while back. Very similar situation. Uh, relatively non-directional. If you're if you're if you, if you're long Merck and you've got it in your portfolio, I would consider stops below fifty six thirty eight from the long side. I'm not a big fan of going short or long this stock right now. The fifty six thirty eight will be support on that. You need to think about putting stops in below there. Let's take a look at UHS. Universal Health Services. Okay, so here's the long term weekly. An amazing. You're like, why? You're like me. Why wasn't I in this stock? Well, uh, strong stocks in a strong sector. We were notified of this on the on the breakouts in in the scanner ahead of time. This, you can make your watch list in here to kind of identify when things are breaking out on a weekly. So the way you do that is you come in here. Let's just say I want to start with the S and P 500. Come in here on a weekly. Actually, if you want to see, these are, let me go backwards, above the box on a, on a weekly. So when this thing re resorts real time, and we're actually putting a sorting feature in here that will sort it from, from uh, I'm sorry, that's the number one down, which will mean that these are the ones that are breaking out above weeklies immediately. So this sorting will be in here this week. So when you see the one, that means that we're it's actually the first week bar that is actually breaking out above on the long term, right? So as we go down here, we see a couple others. Delta Airlines, I'm just looking through the S&Ps right now, showing you this mechanism. Bank of New York Mellon, BK, Ace Limited. Just going down the list of initial breakouts. Kimco Realty Corp. Let's look at that one. KIM. Okay, so it's letting you know that we're on a weekly basis. We're starting to break out above profiles here. All right. And, you know, what does that mean? That means that lately... The S&Ps have pretty much gone sideways. This thing's kind of ramped all the way up through the fair auction. is now sitting right above. I think you've got better long opportunities than this out there, but it's kind of nice that we've kind of, you know, this week gone above, come back and retest it. First, you know, we've, we've got some technical things that are changing on Kimco. So I'm looking at Kimco with support now at around 2465, and that coincides with, 
weekly unfair unfair highs. Let's just look at Kimco here. Let me go back to that. So as we look at this, you can see now that we're sitting right above profiles in the weekly and daily in that same neighborhood, 2465, 2485, somewhere in there. That's going to be the area to look at from the long side with support. But, you know, my feelings on the market in general is we're going to come down on the broad scale. And I'm trying to stay away from even ripe opportunities on the long side. So I just kind of wait and see and let's just see what the market does. Um and I know that's easy to say and hard to do is just kind of wait and see. But as we look at the S&Ps, I think we're non-directional at best right now in the broad market. And I think some people could get chopped up even trying to play around with breakouts that normally would be valid. But uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. Let's take a look at Kellogg K. Again, these are not the, uh, the high flyer internet related social media driven stocks. <laughs> But uh, something again, now now that you've got this movement, 66 can be support on Kellogg, and that coincides with a new daily profile now that you're pretty far above. So, again, that's the way I'm looking at Kellogg. It's, it's nice to know that you could orient some stops below there, actually, and obviously some, some decent news on Kellogg. All right, let's take a look at Home Depot HD. All right, so no mystery here. Things on their highs go higher. That's the good news about this stock. You've got support at 114.51 now. That's where you can orient stops around. Is this thing just gone to the moon, and, and does it deserve to come down 10 or 15%? Again, I think you've got better shorts out there. But if you look at this, it's on a outperformed scale. Obviously, this is beating the S&P into no man's land lately but uh as you look at this if you're going to be having a long short portfolio these are the ones these are the types of stocks you want to be long and long-term stops need to be below 109.58 on home depot let's take a look at soybeans let's just get away from uh stocks for just a second here um Right now, as you, if you've been watching this show, I've been a pretty big fan of, of being short soybeans and trying to pick some battles on the way up. And when we started having breakdowns below 10 bucks around here, that was kind of a, a nice situation that has unfolded quite well. But we always talk about you know waiting until we get near some of these inflection points. Well, right now, you've got you've had a new profile up here on the weekly. And that inflection point to pay attention to now on the short side, in my opinion, is 955. So what's going on this week and where we're at right now? We're trading 952 and a half right now. So we kind of got into the balanced area. That wasn't support. Now it'll act as resistance, hopefully, and that'll be a leverage point. We're in that neighborhood right now. Soybeans is, if you ever traded it, you know what I'm talking about. It's got some volatility to it. So we're getting back up into 955, and then I think we could possibly – Use 910 as a target down south on November beans. This is November beans. While we're looking at that, let's take a look at December corn, 379. Man, what a what a situation here. Again, profile appearing above in the long term. This is seemingly destined to start making even new lows below 360 on December corn. I can't believe I'm saying that, but uh, you know not want to even get above the fair auction here down south so the the really powerful resistance areas on this let me go back to our weekly for a second the really powerful resistance areas are going to be first stop around 380 then 392 and a half or three almost 393 if we stay down here below this fair auction and so you know to sum that up a little bit of activity can be shorted around here with some tight stops because if we get in this fair auction to close above in this balanced area, we could see literally 392, 393. That would be the next place to take a shot. And your targets down below, where are they? Again, I think you just need to let the 240s or the dailies stop you out of the trade by getting back above the balanced area on the way down if this happens. So. 
in my opinion, not looking good for beans and corn on the new crop situation still. Let's take a look at IBM really quick. All right, so we're, we're kind of been a big fan of, of, you know, as soon as we started crossing the, the 167, 35 area again, it was okay to kind of get back in the water on the short side, and then we got even more confirmations below 163.20. This stock has problems. This company has problems. I have no idea how it rallied like it did last. Is this daily last month or last couple? Eh, last month before the uh, the announcement came out. But uh, there's there's nobody that wants to hold this stock right now. I've, I've actually called around about this. This is kind of my pet pet project is monitoring IBM most of the time and. Uh, you know, they've got a huge, huge facility here in Raleigh, North Carolina. They've been outsourcing the heck out of it overseas as much as they can. Okay, so, sorry, I was taking some uh, notes here from... Uh, All right, so I, that's the situation on IBM. Where's the targets down below? Uh, the targets down below, in my opinion, are initially going to be 152. We might get a little bit of a bounce there, but I think we're going to head way farther south than 152 on IBM. Let's take a look at the Japanese yen really quick. Did talk about this earlier. Still my favorite trade. Stops below 123.39 based on that formula we talked about yesterday, which is a, you know 15 to 20% of the height of the box. In this case, it'd be about 40 ticks below there. Um, really looking for this thing to ramp up again. We're going to take a look at the DAX really quick. Some heck of... Oh, my God. This is... Uh, blown through the 11345 area. I'm not a big fan of doing anything with the DAX right now. I think anything goes with this product. Um, you're going to have to trade it, not on a long-term basis, but on a very short-term basis. And we don't have any new, new information here appearing on the DAX. Here's your 60-minute on the DAX. Nothing there also. So, again, you, you've got an orange bar attempting to appear on a 60-minute. But, again, this show doesn't allow for me <laughs> to do 60-minute day trade uh, dissertations on a lot of products. So, again, the DAX, people are calling me about that. Right in the middle of a fair auction on both the long-term and the intermediate term, I'm pretty much a fan of not doing anything with that product right now. Let's go back to the scanner. Got about 20 seconds before break. We're going to take a look at uh, some more attractive situations below the box, below the box on the daily and the weekly. And when we come back from break, we're going to get to hopefully some ripe opportunities on the short side. And we'll be back in about five minutes, folks. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. 
Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Uh, just kind of use the scanner to try to pick out some opportunities here below the box on the weekly and bottom on daily. So what does that mean? That means we're pretty much in a defined downtrend and we're sitting at resistance areas on an intermediate term. So let's take a look at one. Uh, Genworth, actually, let's look at let's look at uh, Navy and Corp, which is NAVI. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, this is uh, obviously ugly. It's a $15 stock and in a downtrend defined on the bottom of a new profile. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is obviously not one to go long. It's not on sale. Let's look at the scanner again. That's That was a little out of the range of what I would want to look at. Let's look at HES Corp HES. Obviously all related. Um, so obviously the long-term trend in these XLE stocks is down and now we're sitting right at the precipice here, went down, went up, went down right back on those inflection points. And now we've got 5772 that could be stops oriented above, not a big fan of crude oil going up or any of these oil stocks right now. Let's try to find something Lowe's Corp. This is another one on the Lowe's, so to speak. Um, I was trying to find something that was retracing back up into. So let's take a look at WIN. Or excuse me, W I N. That's why W I Y N and W I N N. Here we go. 
Yeah, so a pretty good reversal in the last month, back down, sitting on the lows. This is kind of thing you don't want to see as a long-term investor. This is not like a double bottom situation. And you're waiting now until we can get below 8106 to short more of this. W-I-N-N. Again, we're looking for the market to give us a little help on the downside. When resorts, um, obviously a lot of trouble with this company right now. A lot of debt trying to be sold. Here's the uh, 101.65 area sitting on the lows. I know you didn't have to use the scanner to figure out that this thing's just a creepy bad situation. But again, now you've got you've got the hundred situation that you crossed the border below a couple of times, and I know it looks like we're starting to look a little reversal action here on our navigator lower lows higher lows but again i think the market is going to override all of this market coming down could cause stocks that have been weak to go down even farther so when resorts another situation you might think it's on sale in the long term it's not the stock's got a lot of problems it's got to overcome right now and it's giving you some more technical damage along the way here let's take a look at uh Another sort here. Let's go to top. So this this means that stocks are in a downtrend. They've actually retraced back up to the top of their profile. Let's look at Carmax, KMX. A little bit of an intermediate term short here. Here's the kind of the breakdown. We 66.27 bottom of our profile. And then you've got 64.92 that we're getting you. You're getting back down below on Carmax. So, again, looks like we've kind of rallied back up into resistance, especially on the long term. This is nice at the daily profile sitting here. You've got targets down below immediately of 62.60, and even lower down into 55, 51 on Carmax. In my opinion, guys, you've been great. Stay tuned for Larry Pedavento. I'll be back tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.